It would have been uh, nicer for us to have welcomed you to our beautiful campus, which you can see a background of Amy's picture, uh, and to enjoy today's conversation. But um, we are left to technology, and I hope all of you and your families are staying safe and healthy, and that's the most important thing right now. So uh, we would like to take your questions in this format and um, stay for as long as we need to to get them all answered. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Great. So, if uh, you can just go ahead into the into the chat feature on Zoom, um, depending on your device. Uh, if you're on a computer, you should see it at the bottom of the screen, and um, you can go ahead and type in whatever questions you have, um, big or small, about any of our majors or um, the Cavelli School in general, and we'll get those answered for you. Waiting for them to come in. Um, maybe we can just start off with an overview of the um, specific majors and some of the minors and certificates offered in the school um, for folks. Uh, I think there's a question. Okay. Oh, yep, we've got one in. Okay, so the first question are most of the first two years filled up with core curriculum classes, and when do you need to choose a business major? Great question. Uh, that Great question. And um, the first two years are a combination of liberal arts core classes and business classes. As a matter of fact, in freshman year, our students begin by taking a course called Enterprise, which is a gateway course and overview of business. They're also taking courses in microeconomics and macroeconomics, and, uh, and they're also taking some of the liberal arts courses, writing, uh, and uh, the important foundation courses that are building blocks for the rest of the business core curriculum, and certainly moving on into business specialism course majors. Students do not have to declare a major until the end of their sophomore year. And uh, it might be interesting to those who are listening that every year, half of our freshman class in the Gabelli School of Business comes in as what we call exploratory students. Um, some schools would call you undeclared, but we don't look at it that way at all. Uh, the way we look at it is that you're interested in a lot of different things and that you want to spend at least a year kind of exploring those different things you might be interested in, um, whether it's uh, uh, courses in, um, in finance or in marketing or management or anything else. And we have a lot of support services to help you sort out what you might want to major in from faculty advisors to um, mentors to alumni uh, to individual students who are upper class people who can share with you their journeys to getting to a major, but you don't have to declare until the end of your sophomore year. Okay, great. Okay. Someone else is wondering if there is an internship requirement. Some of our majors do require internships, uh, like management and international business, but not all of them require internships. But I will tell you that 100% of students in the Gabelli School of Business do at least one internship. And that is part of our emphasis on experiential education, which is encouraging students to take what they're learning in the classroom and apply it to a world setting. Uh, our curriculum is sort of unique in that uh, we allow students to take up to three internships for academic credit. Most other business schools don't have a level of flexibility in their curriculum. But we think it's really important. It's foundational to our focus on experiential education and providing a good balance of theory and practice. Okay. The next question is if I were to major in psychology and minor in business, do any of the classes overlap or can they count for both requirements? Well, um, they really can't count for both requirements because they're pretty separate majors. Uh, but you can certainly major in psychology, minor in business. Uh, you can, uh, if you take the general business major, there really wouldn't be any overlap. If you take um, a major that's more specific to something like math, there might be some overlap. But I think in general, you shouldn't count on there being any overlap. Uh, there are sufficient courses, though, uh, in the elective slots for you to be able to take a minor without 
without requiring any additional coursework or needing to take summer classes or something along those lines. And by the way, one of the real strengths of the Gibbet School of Business and Dr. Williams University is the number of combinations of majors and minors that you can put together. And we have seen the whole gamut. Uh, we have had students who have majored in management and minored in dance. We've had students who have majored in finance and minored in math. And we've got students who have majored in marketing and minored in something like biology. So depending on what your interests are, um, there are lots and lots of ways to combine the different majors that are offered both at the Gabelli School and around university into a unique program, depending on what your interests are. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, when we've uh, took, taken a look at the data, we actually find that over 80% of our graduates will have combined programs in some way. So whether it's a major and a minor, a double major, or a core concentration with their major, it's a really popular thing to do and um, sets up students well for graduation just because of the nature of um, kind of the you know business world when you graduate there's a lot of um, collaboration and interdisciplinary approach to problem solving so you know having um, those combinations is really helpful right. we have other questions waiting for some more to flow in don't be shy. <laughs> Don't have to be shy at all. This is what we're here for. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So do internships for majors or minors occur all at the same time? Um, if so, how would a major in psychology and a minor in business carry out? I'm not sure I understand the question, but let me take a stab at it and then you can tell me if I'm not answering it. Um, I'm not sure if it's an internship required in the psychology major, so I don't know how that would work. Um, uh, if a student minoring in business, we also suggest that they do an internship, uh, but it, it, not all of our business minds do internships at the same level that our uh, business majors do them. Uh, in other words, pretty much a of our business majors will do at least one internship. We, we don't really know about minors in terms of how many of them do them. Um, and I, I'm not sure if this question is related to the earlier question about, for example, could you count an internship for both in both? And um, my guess is you probably couldn't. I don't think you could do an internship in uh, business and then try and argue for getting credit for that in psychology. That's kind of uh, that's kind of double dipping on things. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think if I would add to that, I, I sometimes I think it depends on what your um, kind of career goal is. You're like, you know, what are you in terms of um, combining psychology and business? Is there a particular pathway that you're looking for? Because then you'll want your internship um, to get you some experience in that particular area, and um, and so maybe you know not even, you know, it's not necessarily as important to do it for credit, but just to do it for the experience. And that's where um, working with your advisor, working with the career services office, we can help you find an internship in either an industry or, um, you know, a particular company that's of interest to you. And that's possible. You can certainly do an internship for no, no credit. I was really addressing internships that are, are for academic credit. And then somebody else is asking, how long is the average internship? Well, the average internship uh, is three credits, which is our usually our standard for courses. They're each three credits. Uh, and students have to fill 135 hours of time uh, work in their internship in order to get three credits. So we don't really worry too much about um, uh, how that's distributed. For example, we will have students who will do 135 hours over the summer. We'll have students who will do 135 hours over the fall. Uh, we will even have some students who will do 135 hours from the December into the January break. So there are lots of ways of constructing that depending on um, what the student's internship is and what the rest of their schedule and what the rest of those commitments academically are. But the bottom line is it's, it's going to be 135 hours at the internship. And then again, um, related to internships, um, do you offer guidance and do you have connections with certain companies in terms of obtaining internships? Yeah, 
tips come from a number of different sources. Uh, we um, have a very active group of faculty who have connections to alumni and to industry. Uh, we have direct connections to our alumni ourselves. Uh, the Center for Career and Professional Development uh, also participate in a nationwide network called Handshake, which provides students uh, up updated opportunities in internships and time employment that those are updated literally on an hourly basis. And we do have a variety of relationships with organizations that, uh, that often hire our interns, uh, but um, they, the students kind of go all over depending obviously on what they're majoring in and what their career interests are. Uh, we've got students who uh, will uh, who are interested in advertising, who um, will go into you know internships with media buyers to learn that in the business or into social media marketing or something along those lines. We've got other students who are majoring in finance um, who go to uh, certain companies where we have alumni who are have been placed in the past. So a lot of it depends on what the student is interested in from a professional standpoint and what they're majoring in. But we have quite a network that supports our internship placement and uh, student wants an internship uh, can get one. Okay, wonderful. Um, and then somebody is asking if there are any relationships with biotechnology companies for business internships. I can't think of a biotechnology company right off the top of my head that we have a formal relationship with, but we have a number of students who have gone uh, up to uh, different companies in Boston, uh, in uh, particularly around the Route 128 area, uh, where students who are interested, for example, in marketing, learning the ropes on marketing from the biotech standpoint, have internships. Um, it's uh, it's not a, it, it's an area that's kind of emerging for our students, um, and we are out relationships, particularly with our alums who are going to work in that space. We have a few people who have also gone out to California uh, who have um, have done pretty well in biotechnology. One guy started his company out there and uh, is doing pretty well. Okay, great. And then next question is, is a semester abroad common for business majors and is it common specifically for marketing majors? Uh, another great question. Uh, study abroad is becoming more and more common for business majors. Well over half of our students uh, study abroad, do the traditional one semester study abroad programs, and uh, we are very supportive of those, and students can certainly work those into their schedule. We have a program of uh, faculty advising where we uh, ask freshmen to meet with their faculty advisor and let them know if they're planning to do internships or study abroad uh, or any kind of special activities so that we can make sure we build those into their academic program and they have time to do those within the four-year uh, span of their degree. So uh, there is e increasing frequency of students going abroad and they go all over the place and absolutely marketing majors and international business majors and um, management majors are well represented in the ranks of students who study abroad. We also have a program with the University in Nancy in France uh, so that interested in doing um, a dual degree and getting a European business degree along with their Robert Williams business degree, they can go wrong one year to Nancy and end up with the two degrees, one from Nancy and one from Roger Williams from the Gabelli School. Cool. And then the next question is, how would you describe a business minor workload um, adding on to a psychology major? I think a psychology major and business minor is definitely a manageable uh, combination. I'd like to know a little more maybe at some point about, um, and this is something you can provide guidance on, but a little bit more about the specific area of uh, business interest to help guide that student to the right classes in the Gabelli School. We see um, a lot of students who do things like a marketing major and a psychology major. As a matter of fact, um, psychology is the most popular minor for students in the business school. And we find a lot of management and marketing students do that minor. And um, I know you're talking about the other way around with the psychology major and the business minor, but that's certainly something that's doable. Uh, it's manageable workload. Um, it would use up elective slots in the students' 
um, psychology, liberal arts degree to be able to do the business minor, but it's six courses, so it's certainly doable. Great. And then um, another question is, how are you doing the distance distant learning currently to ensure that students are getting a similar education to that on campus? Could you say that again, Amy? Um, so this person is wondering um, how we're how we're doing the distant learning, distance learning for our current students um, to ensure that they're getting a similar education that that they would if they were on campus currently. What a great question and what a timely question. Uh, the, the way we approached this was that uh, the university decided when our students were on spring break that we were going to extend the spring break by a week. And at the end of that week, we were going to convert to instruction using an online platform. Um, we used that week to make sure that all of our platforms were um, robust enough and our bandwidth was, was robust enough to support activities of the faculty. We also um, used that week to uh, bring a lot of people up to speed, available technologies, and make sure the faculty knew it was available. Fortunately for us, we had a fairly robust learning management system in place already supported things like meetings uh, and uh, dist distance learning from the standpoint of holding virtual meetings and communicating with students and so that was a very big help to us so we're primarily used sakai which is our learning management system which we bridges uh, named after the Mount Hope Bridge, which is right nearby our campus, lovely Mount Hope Bridge. And it's all gone extraordinarily well. Um, I have been in touch with our students. I'm sending out emails once every few days to check and see how everybody's doing. And I've gotten some very, very positive feedback. And I have to say, I haven't gotten any negative feedback from the students on the transition. Uh, to the online platforms. Other than that, they miss their friends and they miss seeing their faculty members in person. But um, the way that things are set up, we've made this as personal as possible, given that we're using virtual platforms, because that's something that really right in uh, is the individual personal attention we give to all of our students. And we certainly have carried that over to this transition. Great. Thanks. Uh, next question is, what kind of computer should a business major have? Oh my, somebody asked me this earlier today. <laughs> um, well, we have students who have Macs and we have students who have PCs. Uh, I've been working in business schools for a long time, and I remember when no business student ever had a, a Mac, but now half of our students do. Um, so they really can choose from either the Mac or the PC. In terms of the exact specifications, I don't know those right off the top of my head, but we meet um, every year with our IT staff who are a very uh, competent, it's a very group of people and they we put together uh, with our faculty uh, the specific the specifics about what they would need to support their learning at belly and that information is available on the IT pages of the rwu website so if you go to rwu.edu and then you pull it uh, or google student computer specs or something um, you'll get to that and i'm sorry i don't have the detailed information and if you have any trouble uh, finding it you would email me, I will be happy to put you in touch with someone who can give you the information. I'm very easy to find on the web uh, and uh, I'm very responsive to emails and questions. So just let me know. I'm sorry, I don't have the specifics, but either the Mac or the PC works. So there's, um, I'm gonna, there's a PDF on the website. It's called Hardware Standards and Recommendations for Students. I'm gonna co copy and paste the URL into the chat Right now. Oh, good. So Thank you, Amy. See, see if that works. Um, <laughs> and everyone can look that up. And it gives you the standards for um, different um, types of laptops and recommendations for amount of memory, processing speed, also for tablets and uh, all the rest. So yeah, there's so many options now. <laughs> yeah, and it may be mentioned in that link, but our IT staff, uh, our media tech area does support both uh, student Macs and PCs. If students run into glitches along the way, they're a great resource and they'll mm -hmm. help them online. Uh, they have a desk on the first floor of the library where they can help them over the phone. They're very good and very available and very responsive. Yes, they are for sure. Right. Perfect. 
I'm waiting for some more questions today. Okay. I think through. there are some more. I'm seeing. Okay. Uh... So I think we're caught up. We're caught up with what's on the screen right now that I can see. And we're happy to answer anything kind of more broadly as well. I know if people are interested in um, kind of the classroom experience, um, you know, anything related to um, enrolling. Okay, another question is, what is the most popular business major? Well, there's kind of a tie these days. Um, it used to be management, but marketing has really creeped up and uh, we have about the same uh, number of students in both the management and marketing. Those are the two very popular majors. Okay. And then another question is, how is this business, pro how does this pro business program differ from others? Well, I think you probably know by now that we're accredited by AACSB International, uh, which accredits only 5% of business schools in the world and 30% in the United States. So that's a, um, a distinguisher for us the other 70% business schools in the US. But beyond that, uh, we uh, have a philosophy with respect to business education that includes uh, what I had mentioned earlier, a very personal approach, a lot of interaction, a lot of individual interaction between faculty and students, between our staff and students. Uh, we emphasize teamwork. Uh, we start that in the freshman year and that in our class, which is that freshman gateway class for all of our students. And uh, we also uh, are interested in helping students develop not only as professionals who will uh, end up working in business or in using their skills in organizations or in government, but during that we have a good sense of what it's like to be um, a solid citizen of their communities as well. Uh, we just received um, recognition from the Carnegie Foundation. Can you hear me? My, I'm getting a message that you can hear me. Uh, hear we just recently uh, received honor from the Carnegie Commission where we were recognized for our, um, our, in our integration of experiential learning into our academic programs so that, you know, not, ju not, ju not just every student in the Gabelli School of Business does an internship, they will do other things beyond the internship, engage in uh, community partnership projects where they get out and help in the community and understand what it's like to be not just a good corporate citizen, but a good community citizen. So um, th those are kind of some brush to how we differ from other schools. And uh, it, it's overall um, a unique approach for business schools. And I think the approach that we have is highly preferable for many, many students. Great. Yeah, I think that um, the Carnegie classification that you mentioned is a, is a really important um, piece to mention. And um, that's, a, that's a new thing that we just earned very recently and I'll I'll share a link out um, to that information as well if um, people are looking into that a little bit more. Um, but it, uh, it really is kind of the, the gold standard for um, universities that um, incorporate engaged learning, um, hands-on learning into the curriculum. Okay, so the next question. Um, our class size is larger for the early level courses, and what is the average number of students in a class? Our average number of students in a class is about 22. Uh, some of them are a little bigger than that. Some of them are smaller than that. Um, <clears throat> I would say that some introductory economics and introductory accounting classes tend to be a little bit bigger than that. But again, uh, one of the things that we really subscribe to is ensuring the close student faculty interaction. And we regularly hear from students, from alumni, how important that was for them in their decision to enroll and how important that was to them while they were students here. So we have no intentions of departing from that philosophy. It really is something that characterizes, characterizes the education that we provide. And um, just speaking kind of overall um, for the entire campus, um, we know that 99% of our courses have fewer than 40 students in them. 
Um, so you're always going to be kind of in that. Um, there won't be any large lecture halls in any of your courses um, across yeah. either the core, core, core curriculum as well. If you ever get a, ch if you get a chance or if you've had a chance to walk through our building, um, you can see that we don't have classrooms that support very large classes and that's quite deliberate. <laughs> What percentage of your business faculty are full-time professors? Uh, we have a full-time faculty that comprises about 86% of our teaching staff. And the rest of the teaching team is made up of a cadre of what we call practitioner faculty who are thoroughly screened individuals with a passion for teaching. Most of them come from uh, C-level uh, positions. So the former C chief financial officers or chief executive officers or chief marketing officers. And uh, they add a lot to our instructional ranks because they bring in some additional real world experience, which most of our faculty have anyway. But uh, the, what we call the practitioner faculty uh, bring in their experiences and they are great in the classroom they are wonderful advisors and um, informal sources of information for our students about lots of things, like careers and um, navigating the job market and uh, resume development and just a whole bunch of other things. So it, it's a really great balance. Because we are accredited by ACSP International, we are required to ensure that uh, we have an appropriate number of faculty who are terminally qualified, so they have to hold the doctoral credential in their field of study uh, that they're teaching. And, uh, so uh, that's kind of an insurance policy to, insure, to make certain that we're delivering the kind of education that we say we are, which is a very high quality business education supported by excellence in faculty instruction and in thing technology to support the education library facilities, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Other questions? Nobody, we've had a lot of questions um, in other sessions about the four plus one MBA. I haven't seen any questions on that yet. Yeah, no um, questions on that. <laughs> we can talk a little bit about that while we're waiting for people to process um, some more questions. Well, for those of you who may have received a letter about the four plus one MBA, uh, I just want to make a couple of quick notes because we, as Amy says, we have been getting a lot of about it. Um, the 4 plus 1 MBA program is something we're extremely proud of. It's a one-year opportunity for students to finish their MBAs after they finish a Bachelor of Science degree. It's a full-time cohorted program that starts in August uh, after the completion of the bachelor's degree. And uh, it has a couple of unique features. One of them is an internship requirement and another is an international experience where the travel as a group to someplace out of the country um, and they've been to Panama, they've been to China, they were scheduled to go to Chile and Argentina this year but uh, for all the reasons with which we are not familiar that didn't happen unfortunately uh, but students are encouraged to really look into the program if they have plans for graduate school because it's a very efficient way of finishing up your master's for getting into the full-time workforce and uh, saving you a year from getting that master's degree. Normally, at least a year proposition. If you do it on a part-time basis, it could take up to five years. So if people are interested in master's in business administration degree, this is a great opportunity to, to do that degree. Uh, students are encouraged to make sure that they've been accepted to the program by the spring of their senior year, because if they are accepted, uh, in the second semester of the senior year, they can actually take a course, which is leadership and organization that will count towards the MBA and towards the undergraduate degree. So it's kind of a kind of a double dip uh, course. Uh, allow and students pay undergraduate tuition for that as part of their regular tuition and fees for the spring, and then that three credits moves into the MBA program as well. Great. And um, related to that, a follow-up question, what are the prerequisites or the difficulty of being accepted into the 4 plus 1 program? Well, the prerequisite is to finish the undergrad degree at the Gabelli School in good standing. Uh, the students who are um, accepted into the program 
them tend to be our high performing students. They um, have usually have about a 3.4 average. Some of them have a little bit less than that. Some of them have a little bit more than that. Students generally have a 3.0 in order to be considered for the program. It's fairly rigorous. It is a one year MBA program. We want to make sure that they're going to succeed the program. Um, but uh, we don't, re we may not require any standardized testing of their undergraduate GPA is. So students are eligible to have the uh, GMAT or energy waived. And if they have it waived, they can take either test uh, with their application to the program. Great, thanks. Did I see another question come up? We're caught up right now. We're caught up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think everybody probably knows that we have a variety of majors that are offered uh, accounting, management, marketing, economics, international business, uh, finance, uh, so that we run the full gamut of majors. And for every one of those majors, students are also eligible to do a minor. Uh, and in addition, uh, we do have the 4 plus 1 MBA program, which was mentioned. Uh, we have a 3 plus 3 law program so that if you're interested in law school, uh, we take advantage of the fact that um, Roger Williams University has the only law school in Rhode Island. And you can do the law degree, the undergraduate degree, a total of six years rather than seven or more. Um, we also have a very active uh, experiential learning environment classroom that involves things like our CAFE program, which is the Center for Advanced Financial Education, whereby we are managing two real-time, real folks uh, in real time, doing the and making the decisions on investments themselves, unlike a lot most, unlike most other business schools that have similar programs where they have to go through an advisory board, our students do not make the calls. They haven't had a good few weeks, but then again, who has? last few weeks. Uh, we have a student invest uh, we have student advertising competition where our students prepare a full marketing promotions advertising program a particular product every year and uh, our students have gone to the regionals and have done extremely well there over the last few years. Uh, there are a variety of other ways that students can take advantage of experiential activities uh, in the Gabelli School and outside the Gabelli School. But those are just a couple of the highlights while we're waiting for more questions. All right, we have uh, one more that came in. Do any classes overlap with criminal justice and in general business minor? Um, and if so, do credits count for both? minor requirements? Um, no, we do not have any overlap requirements with the CJ, uh, criminal justice. The School of Justice Studies uh, is uh, kind of a, a different place from what we are. Uh, you wouldn't, they wouldn't have, uh, there wouldn't be any double counting of courses there. We do have students who are majoring in criminal justice, uh, who are minoring in business. Uh, we've had a lot of interest lately in the area of forensic accounting, for example, where uh, maybe in the School of Justice Studies in a degree in criminal justice, but want to get familiar with accounting um, uh, practices and financial statements and uh, auditing and those of things that might lead to a career in forensic accounting. So there's not any overlap in terms of uh, the degree requirements, but there are ways of customizing degrees that might have started out as uh, CJ or criminal justice, but are infused with some business element of forensic, the best example I can think of. Good question. And we welcome CJs to come and do business minors. We're very happy to have them. And I'll just mention um, to folks as well that if you haven't um, been to campus, or even if you have and you, you want a refresher, we have a couple um, things that are online right now. We have a virtual campus tour, um, which has some great uh, photos and 360 degree photos of our um, facilities and particularly of the, um, the cafe and the um, 
the trading room um, for the that are in the Gabelli School of Business. And so those would be great to take a look at. And then um, we also have a, a recorded campus tour with one of our um, student tour guides did. And we were able to film uh, while we were still on campus before we moved to remote. And uh, that tour will also um, go over the, the business school and you can get a kind of a brief look at um, how the campus looks and how the School of Business looks on campus. So if you haven't had a chance to check either of those out yet, definitely take a look at those. And I have uh, the big news from the Belly School this week is our data analytics team, for those who might have an interest in data analytics and potentially in our data analytics minor, uh, won first and second place at the national competition um, sponsored by the American Information Systems Organization. If you're interested in how they did that or you have an interest at all in data analytics, I'd encourage you to go to the RWU website uh, and go to the news section and there is a press release in there about uh, how they did this and uh, what their feedback was from the judges and we're very, very proud of them and very excited that our presence in analytics continues to advance with uh, such um, excellence in performance in a national competition. Okay, other questions? No, we're all caught up with questions um, okay. for now. So I think, um, you know, just as uh, others may come along, um, you know, Susan mentioned that she's more than happy to um, have you reach out to her directly um, and you can also get in touch with the admission office. And um, we're going to have some more Q&As coming up over the coming days and weeks. We'll also have some, um, if you haven't done the uh, Gabelli School of Business Overview presentation yet, that's a, that's a really good one um, to take you through uh, all of the aspects of the business school experience, but there's also presentations on the individual majors too. So if you know what you want to do, or if you're not sure and you want to get a sense of, you know, what is marketing like versus management, et cetera, um, those would be some great ones to jump on in the coming days and weeks. Um, but really yeah. appreciate everyone joining us today. Yeah, and just to reiterate what Amy said, um, please feel free to email me with questions. We are all working remotely at the moment. We're not going to be for much longer because we miss each other and our beautiful campus that you can see behind Amy. Um, uh, and uh, I'm on email regularly. I'm very happy to answer any of your questions, no matter how small or big they sound. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, please just send them along. I will get back to you um, fairly quickly. I'm pretty good at turning around email. So I, I want to congratulate everybody who participated with us today. It's, um, it's really um, an accomplishment to be admitted to Valley School of Business, and we hope that we'll see many of you visiting our campus, and we hope we'll see many of you as part of our freshman class come August when we start classes in the fall. And um, Again, congrats. It's, uh, it's a great, great thing to be admitted to an AAC be accredited school. And um, we're, we're a terrific AAC be accredited school with a lot of great features. And uh, keep your questions coming. And please, everyone, stay safe and stay healthy in these unsettled times. You're joining us. Thank you, Dean McKiernan. Thank you, everyone, so much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Bye.